On this edition of Around BCC, we sit down with BCC President Dr. John Spraga to preview what's expected to be an exciting 2013-2014 academic year. A new influx of incoming students get their first taste of BCC, and the college's workforce center gets the attention of Governor Patrick and Congressman Kennedy. Welcome to Around BCC, I'm Keith Tebow. It's another academic year underway here at Bristol Community College at all our campuses. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to our 14th season of producing this program, which looks at the people, events, and academic programs at Bristol Community College. And as has been our tradition in the 14 years we've done the show, the first program of the new year, we're joined by BCC's president, Dr. John Sprager. Dr. Sprager, thank you for joining us. And again, I say this every year, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thank you, Keith. I can't believe it's been 14 years where you came in uh, with me together. Just well, we all now. have a little more gray hair yeah. than we did. Uh, well, speak for yourself. Speak for yourself. <laughs> 14 years ago. <laughs> we have a lot on our plate. It's going to be an exciting year here, 2013-2014 uh, at Bristol Community College. Um, one of the things that I want to get to first, it's always some of the maybe not the most glorious part of what we talk about. We always talk about money and budget uh, for the year. Of course, we're just recovering from a recession, some parts of the state doing better than others. But uh, some good news on the financial front for BCC this year in that there's a new funding formula for Community College, and that resulted in some increased funding for BCC. Yes, I'm very excited about that, especially since I played a role in both. Uh, there are two distinct uh, categories in this good news. Uh, the first is that uh, there is a new formula funding for community colleges that has been established and I am very thankful that I was part of the task force uh, that put this formula together. And it was to make more equitable appropriations uh, from the state yeah. uh, throughout the 15 community colleges, which has not been the case certainly right. the 14 year, long before the 14 years that I arrived. Right. So uh, that is a distinct uh, operation, uh, the, this formula funding. And it, what it does is rewards uh, uh, institutions with higher enrollment and performance. 50% of the funding is um, uh, tied to performance. The other 50% is, is to enrollment. So on both fronts, uh, Bristol Community College is, uh, does yeah. excellent. And yeah. uh, we're, we're finally, finally, after 14 years of struggle, we're finally getting some of our just due uh, in the state largesse. So no matter what kind of money is available, they would be distributed, uh, whether it's minus or plus, it would be distributed by on the basis of this formula. That's why I say it's distinct from the other good piece of good news that we have, which is unprecedented in my 14 years, and that is that another $20 million has been added to community colleges uh, beyond and abo above and beyond the appropriation that we normally get. Yeah. So uh, you take the first category, formula funding, and the second category, uh, extra money. And the way that money is distributed will be through the formula. Right. That's why they're connected, uh, but separate. Right. Uh, uh, and you take those two things together, and for Bristol, it's an amazing 21% increase over what we've uh, been suffering through over these past years. I mean, and I hasten to add that that sounds wonderful and, is very, and it is wonderful and we're very glad to have it. But I must say that even then there was such an inequity in the distribution over the many, many decades, not just my 14 years, that Bristol is still far below uh, where we should be mm. and far below some of our peers of the 15. Right. Uh, so it's going to take a, a little while uh, you'd, uh, the idea of the formula was to not make great waves, uh, great pendulum swings, right. uh, severe minus numbers and Correct. severe plus numbers. Right. So this moderates it a bit and, uh, and consequently will go over uh, a few years, it'll be spread over a few years. Now the next question that logically comes up is how, how will BCC spend this extra money? Well, I'm glad you mentioned that. I think uh, I've been asked that many times. <laughs> and I think if you put together all the promises I made, uh, we probably need uh, you know 200% more money than, than what we've said. But essentially it will be as always, 
keeping our main thing the main thing, as I always like to say, and that is instruction and instructional support. Mm -hmm. So we'll be looking at new positions in those, additional positions in those fields and uh, to try to get more full-time faculty, Good. more advisors, more financial aid people, more uh, uh, admissions people, uh, mm -hmm. registration. So there is a great deal of need uh, because we have been, uh, uh, had difficult times over these right. 14 years. And, and you've always said putting the money where the mission is. Yes. And that's the mission. Absolutely, there absolutely. Another big uh, initiative that we touched upon, I think, a little last year at this time, but it's going to come to fruition, and we actually talked about this exactly 10 years ago, yes. is the college is up for its accreditation yes. once again. The New England um, Association of Schools and Colleges yes. will be on campus in the spring to yes. look over BCC's uh, facility and the operation and, and hopefully come up with some good news on accrediting BCC for another 10 year period. Talk about how important it is, this accreditation and what it means for the college. Well, you're right. We, we emphasized it 10 years ago and we'll continue to emphasize it. Uh, NEASC and the New England Association of Schools and Colleges uh, comes every 10 years, if not, if not before that, uh, to uh, look at what we do. And it, they do that for every institution right. in, um, in uh, New England and high schools too. Um, so the idea is it's an exhausting uh, process. Uh, we have uh, uh, self-study, institutional self-study that we're just about finishing the first draft will be complete by, uh, I'm going to say, December. And then we, uh, we distribute it to a visiting team of experts come to visit the campus. And those will be March 30th through April 2nd. And they'll be here looking at everything we do uh, on every nook and cranny, like Fenway Park. Every rock. Uh, that's every right. Rock. But we'll be, uh, we'll, you know, we're very happy and uh, we welcome their uh, advice. Uh, these are experts in their various right. fields, faculty, student services, fiscal, all kinds of experts. Uh, and we welcome the uh, new eyes to look at what we're doing and how we're doing it and if there are different ways or better ways that we could be doing things. So it's a two-way street. We kind of tell them what we're doing, but they let us know, uh, you know, not, not, they don't tell us what to do, but they uh, make some observations and, right. and provide some expert uh, guidance to us. And over the past year, the college was undergoing a self-study to provide yes. that information to this yes. group. So when they come in, they're not totally... Uh, blinded by what they will see. There's, there's going to be a guideline of how, how the college sees it has done over the past 10 years. And that's, I would think, um, in conjunction with strategic planning and, and mission and, and all of that. Yes, there was a high, highly developed structure mm -hmm. uh, for this NEASC process. There are 11 standards or chapters, right. and each standard, uh, for example, faculty or academic programs or integrity or public disclosure. So there are 11 of them. And uh, of course, the visiting team, uh, there won't be 11 visiting visitors, but there will be people who are experts in some of those fields. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, a faculty member will come and uh, talk to us about that standard. Each of the standards has multiple sub uh, paragraphs and substandards mm -hmm. uh, so that it is a very uh, detailed a, and a, as I mentioned, exhaustive uh, process. Uh, we must respond to each one of those substandards under each one of those 11 uh, categories. Uh, and they too, in turn, must re write up uh, whatever they see and find about each one of those uh, subparagraphs right. as well. So that'll be something that the college will be looking forward to. Now, will there be any sort of report uh, from the ASC by what date? Yes, uh, yeah. Summer well, the, next year? Uh, yeah, the date is not set yet, but the team re, uh, will leave here on April 2nd and uh, then make its report to the uh, uh, Institutional for uh, Higher Education uh, up in uh, uh, Brockton, uh, I'm sorry, in the Bedford, and they will uh, talk about uh, their recommendations. And then this uh, council will uh, study, this, uh, our self study, study the report of the visiting team, and make their own assessments about the continuation of uh, our accreditation status. <clears throat> and that, uh, the date is not set yet, but it should be in the fall, uh, a year from now, now fall of uh, uh, 14. 14. Yeah. So now normally with the accreditation, <coughs> uh, the accreditation can last up to 10 years, is that correct? Up sometimes to 10, Sometimes it yeah. could be shorter. Yes. Because I remember yeah. that from, from our last discussion. Yeah, it's not, uh, it's not unusual now it used to be unusual but, uh, to, to, would, uh, that you wouldn't have it for 10 full years. But now it's not unusual to have a, a few of those 11 standards uh, to have us make a report 
on one standard or yeah. another that they want to know what the progress has been made and uh, and keep them up to date mm. so it's a it's a much more detailed and continuing process than it used to be I should add that uh, every five years uh, on the odd five years mm -hmm. after the 10-year visit uh, we are required to submit a report in writing right. there's not a visit involved so uh, it looks like uh, uh, from what I've seen in from previous schools uh, in the last three or four years there have been uh, two-year reports uh, that are, have been asked for or four-year uh, so that you know these these requests are made and we're happy to comply sure and hopefully we'll have some good news next year at this time that's we, right we take that's next right. year's show there are a number of new initiatives that people uh, who are attending BCC and those who are just interested in the college will be interested in knowing about for uh, the coming year. A lot has been done on the college's side in terms of workforce development and getting those uh, added skills for them to succeed or get back into the workforce. Talk about how that has grown here at BCC and oh. now obviously it's taken over a whole floor at uh, Duval Street. Yeah, yeah. two floors two, now. Yeah. Yes, but it's, uh, it is. It's a it's uh, good news and bad news, I suppose. The bad news is that uh, there are people out of work that need to refurbish their skills and their credentials uh, so that they can seek employment. The good news is that the people who have uh, positions or people aspiring to positions are students. Uh, so current employees or our students uh, could prepare themselves to enter the workforce or to refurbish their skills uh, and uh, reach for higher levels of employment. So it's a, it's a kind of a good news and, and good news really, right. even for unemployed people who really get good news, but it's a way for them to uh, see an opportunity to move forward into uh, career fields. Mm. Um, also, uh, our workforce activities, uh, this uh, requires uh, some, part, uh, some credit work and some non-credit work. Right. Uh, the important thing is uh, up to the employer uh, we will go to your company, for example. Okay. You may want some training for your employees in this skill or that skill, and we'll take care of that. Or you may want them to have credit courses working toward their associate's degree, and we can provide that too. Now, <clears throat> with all of these options, it has, uh, we've run into some uncertainty about who to call right. uh, about this. Is it credit? Is it non-credit? For most of the people in the uh, community, uh, they don't know much about the difference and the distinction between credit and non-credit. They just want information. They just want, the, and they right. want the certification, right. the credential right. to do the skill. Right. So we've simplified that this year, and we created a, a workforce education institute, and uh, it is going to be a one-stop for all workforce-related acti activities: credit, non-credit, day, right. night, whatever it is. Right. And uh, and uh, we have uh, uh, this center is it's not located in any one particular place. But it, uh, it is located in all of them, in New Bedford and uh, right. uh, Attleboro, as well as Fall River and Duval Street, as you mentioned. Right. So and it, for people looking for information on workforce development, getting back to school, improving your skills, you can contact the college at 508-678-2811, and the extension is 4636, or I-N-F-O, that spells out the letters, info, 4636 is the extension. Another big uh, initiative new this year is sort of a uh, revamping of one of the academic divisions which will again sort of dovetail into focusing on um, reaching out to students and actually K through 12 issues to trying to get them uh, ready for college and yeah. uh, that's part of what's going to be called the division of access and transition All talk right. about that's that. that's easy for you to say yeah that's it was right. difficult <laughs> well the uh, I, must, I should say that the impetus uh, for this uh, uh, structural change has come from our uh, laser-like focus on developmental education right. um, and uh, developmental education uh, to prepare students for the rigors of academic work um, were uh, all these courses were located in different divisions of the college Correct. so we are putting them together under the grouping math and English and uh, taking them out of an existing division and that existing division now has been transformed into this division of access and transformation. Mm -hmm. Again, almost similar to the Workforce Institute, we wanted one number. We have an uh, ambitious array of activities with uh, pre-K, remember pre, my wife's in early childhood, oh, she, yes. yeah, she let me hear from it if I don't say pre, pre-K through 12. Right. All of the various activities, dual enrollment, gateway to college, 
uh, middle college, America, yeah. uh, all of the various activities that we have, Complete College America. So we have a number of things, and again, who to call? Uh, that always comes up. So we are going to have a one one stop uh, uh, facility. Uh, we're going to get a one one number, like the info number for a workforce institute, so that people know uh, who to contact. Uh, right now, it's Dean uh, uh, Sarah Morrow, right. and I should mention Associate Vice President Ter Teresa Moran Romanovich is the head of our workforce institute. Right. So uh, the one contact is uh, to simplify things. Right. We are a bewildering, complex mm -hmm. institution, as you know, and you've seen it grow. Um, and there are a number of different offices and activities, and uh, we want to bring cohesion and rationality to all of them. And uh, I think that uh, one stop, we did it for enrollment services when I first got here years ago, and we're doing it now for uh, two very important issues, workforce development and um, also any pre-K through 12 activities. You've heard the uh, uh, discussion about the Innovation Academy right. in Fall River. Right. Uh, anything that has to do with uh, pre-K through 12 will now be uh, directed to this one division. Another new initiative uh, that I want to spend a little bit of time on is we're getting close on time. And you know, I, I should have gotten the an acronym, the CATCH Institute. I yes. know some of the letters, yes. culinary arts, tourism, hospitality. Casino. Casino. C-H. C-H. Culinary arts, tourism. tourism. Casino, you know, hospitality. hospitality, catch. And that, uh, and that is sort of a, a way to um, piggyback upon what may be a, a, a burgeoning industry in this area with a potential casino possibly yes. coming. Yes, the culinary arts, of course, right, uh, stands as it is. Right. Uh, hospitality and tourism and uh, casino all have kind of been grouped together. Uh, whether the casino's in this area or not, we can prepare students for work in right. those areas. And uh, we want, it's part of a larger uh, community regional effort to make southeastern Massachusetts a final destination for tourists uh, to come and enjoy the splendor of the New Bedford and Fall River and uh, all of the various areas in our south coast. Well, that's exciting. And that's going to be it for us this year. We'll, we'll, we'll talk th throughout the year. You'll yes. see President Sprague on many of our programs throughout the year. But it's always good to catch up at the beginning of the year. And uh, for once, it's good to talk about a lot of good things. Good things, happening that's at right. Bristol Community Absolutely, College. very President happy. President Sprague, thank you for joining me. I thank you for it. having me, Keith. We'll have more of Around BCC right after this. Today is commencement, and I'm graduating with my liberal arts degree. This day marks a, a big transition for me. I've come a very long way. When I read in the mission statement of BCC that we change the world by changing life learner by learner, I said, well, I want to be part of this. I'm like just pumped about today. My family is so excited because they've waited for me to do this and I'm a non-traditional student. Congratulations. Good job. All commencement is is a fancy word for beginning. You've been enriched by what you've been taught at this place. You're loved by the family and friends who've helped you. At Bristol Community College, I grew substantially. The mere fact that the class of 2013 is here celebrating our graduation today means we have all done something proactively to ensure that we are able to compete. You are living in an era of the most dramatic change that humanity has ever seen. It is time for you to write your story and listen to this. What a time to begin. But all of us are reinvigorated by your American story and the fact that you get to begin to write it today so you too can pass a legacy on to your children and grandchildren and their children. When I started at BCC, my expectations were to come here, go to class, and leave. But it didn't work out like that. Actually, I ended up meeting a lot of great people. I ended up joining a lot of programs. I ended up becoming very active on campus because, I don't know, something about this school just makes you want to get involved with everything. My experience has been awesome. I have seen myself grow in ways that I never really saw myself growing, I guess. My experience at PCC has been, uh, I mean, amazing, wonderful, probably I will not find the right adjective to 
describe uh, what I really feel in my heart. Congratulations, you made it! I know now that I can be successful in college. I can move on to a four-year university from BCC. And what BCC has given me is uh, turning this dream into a reality. In August, I will be flying to Cairo for my orientation at the American University in Cairo. Anyone who, who's smart enough to take advantage of it, these resources is going to be successful here and, and on, later on in his life. Today we're having one of our academic orientations. Uh, it's a week-long process. It's pretty exciting because high school was boring and this is like a whole new open world. I'm really excited. I've been excited because I know that's going to be different than high school and I just really like new experiences. It gives the students an opportunity to connect with their academic program advisors so they learn more about their specific program. We're just learning like the basics of college life because it's different than high school, so it's like a huge transition. I'm hoping that I can like perfect the craft of like arts and stuff, and I'll get my associates and move on to like New York or California, and work for like big producers like Disney or something. Ideally, so. Like anything else, I wouldn't go to a car lot and jump in a car and just pay for it and leave. You know, you want to learn about you know something. You know, you need to learn. You know, who your contact people are. You know, who do I need to know? Where do I go for this service? You know, where's Office of Disabilities? Where's the tutoring center? And that's what we do at orientation. We're giving them all, these, all this information. This is the place to come. Um, whether you're going to get into a career field or transfer program, this is a great place to start. This is the first step. So it's nice to have, like, a starting ground, and then I can go from there. So I'm excited to be a BCC, really. Welcome back. A new academic year means an influx of new students coming to Bristol Community College. The biggest hurdle for these first year students is assimilating into the college experience. That's where the college's orientation program comes into play. Along with getting up to speed in terms of their academic requirements, new students at orientation are also exposed to a myriad of programs, services, and activities. First year engagement specialist Michael Hull says it's important for new students not to be afraid to ask for help in navigating through the maze that is the college experience. The whole idea of the first year experience is to get students engaged. And, you know, whether it be, you know, an academic type of engagement outside of the classroom, something like a service learning program, uh, or, you know, an athletics, or, or something along those lines. You know, we want all of our students um, to get tied into the college, to create some roots so that they're um, um, their experience here isn't just academic, but it's an overall college holistic experience. Student Ariana Perry from Tiverton says even though there are many unknowns entering college, she's looking forward to the journey. I'm really excited. I've been excited because I know that's going to be different than high school, and I just really like new experiences, so I'm pumped. It's nice to have like a starting ground, and then I can go from there. So I'm excited to be a BCC, I really am. Hall says there are plenty of resources available to students who find it difficult getting adjusted to college life. All that student needs to do is to seek it out. Some exciting news for BCC students in the Taunton area. This fall, BCC will be offering a limited number of courses mornings at the Kohanet School near downtown. Courses in English, math, liberal arts, business, and other disciplines will be offered twice a week at 9 a.m. or 10.30 a.m. Evening classes will still be available in Taunton at the Friedman Middle School. For more information on courses in Taunton, visit the BCC website. The BCC Workforce Education Institute, mentioned during our interview with President Spraga, was in the news this summer with Governor Patrick and Congressman Kennedy visiting the center on Duval Street in Fall River. Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick paid a visit to the Workforce Center in Fall River over the summer to get an update on the college's efforts to improve the skills of South Coast workers. The governor toured the facility 
and was given a presentation on the impact BCC's workforce programs are making throughout the region. The governor says BCC's efforts set an example for the rest of the Commonwealth. Well, for, uh, for a couple of years now, we've been working with the community colleges to strengthen their uh, connections to local employers, um, to be uh, as uh, responsive as possible to uh, the local needs of local businesses that are growing, uh, trying to develop um, their existing workforce and, uh, and train up a ready workforce. And uh, we've taken some steps with the help of the college uh, presidents over the last couple of years, with the help of the legislature, with some additional funding in the current budget and the one that I've just, uh, that I've just signed. And uh, so we've come down to see how it's, uh, how it's taken hold, and BCC is really leading the way. The Workforce Center also hosted a visit by Congressman Joseph Kennedy and Energy and Environmental Affairs Secretary Richard Sullivan for the announcement of a series of clean energy education grants. BCC is in line to receive $100,000 in federal funds to go toward the advancement of the college's Green Center. Congressman Kennedy says programs like BCC's are vital in providing the training needed for jobs in the emerging green energy sector. I think it does begin uh, with making these investments that are necessary for the future. It begins with education. It begins with a basic competency, a basic foundation for principles. Uh, to get those uh, jobs that are going to be available in the future, whether it's through workforce investment, uh, whether it's through some of the weatherization jobs that we just uh, saw in one of the classes, whether it's through clean tech and uh, the development of wind energy. And obviously the South Coast has tremendous potential here to capture some of these emerging fields and emerging technologies if we have the skilled workforce that is ready to take advantage of those opportunities as they become available. And that starts with programs like workforce investment from uh, BCC. Some other green energy education news coming out of BCC. This fall, BCC in New Bedford will be offering a 14-credit wind power certificate. The program will prepare students in system installation, operation, and maintenance within the wind energy industry. Jobs in the field will become more plentiful as the city of New Bedford works with private developers on the installation of wind turbines off the South Coast and Rhode Island. BCC has always been a place that assesses and helps address the needs of its community. For the second straight year, the college is supporting the needy by co-sponsoring monthly visits by the Boston Food Bank. Last fall, BCC began playing host monthly to the Boston Food Bank's mobile market, providing needy college students with fresh perishable and non-perishable goods. Organizer Kathy Torpy Garganta says as the months progressed and the word spread, the mobile market began serving people outside the college community, and BCC was glad to extend the market's reach. The students, the faculty, the administrators, everyone from maintenance to the president that has volunteered on one of these days has just gotten so much personal gratification out of it. So we're, we're really uh, filling quite, quite a need. And we've certainly grown. We've grown from doing 100 people, and now we're close to 100, uh, 350 people, which services, that's just individuals walking through and getting the food. And in the data that we're collecting, we're serving nearly 800 people. The mobile market is held every second Monday of the month at the Fall River campus. Another intercollegiate athletic season is underway at BCC with the men's and women's soccer teams returning to the pitch. The 2013 version of the men's B soccer squad has five players returning from a team which had a record of 4-12 and 12 a year ago. Head coach Arsene Oka took over the club midway through last season and begins his first full year this fall. He says he has a versatile team for which he has high expectations. I have a lot of goals. Uh, normally the, the objective of the school is just to win as much game as we want. But I have my personal goal. My personal goal is to make the playoffs because I think I have enough uh, players in the roster to attain that goal. And uh, the collective goal for all the players is to have a chance to make a first division or second division university and benefit from uh, a, an athletic scholarship.
The Lady Bee soccer team also gets back into action this month with head coach Dave Barabee hoping for an improvement over last year's winless campaign. That'll do it for Around BCC this month. Remember, for more information on Bristol Community College, visit the college's website at bristolcc.edu. I'm Keith Tebow. Thanks for watching.